Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Greta and I'm super excited to have you. To all my existing subscribers, mwah, thank you. I love you to pieces. Whew. You guys ready for this? I have an epic episode. I have the ultimate cherry list. Now, by the way, you know I had to wear, like, you know what eyeshadow palette I had to wear, right? I mean, you may or may not know, but I went with Naked, Naked Cherry palette because it just felt like it, right? Actually, I'm even drinking cherry seltzer because I'm like, I'm in a cherry mode, guys. I am all cherried up for this video for you. All cherried up. I have the epic, ultimate list of cherry fragrances. I'm telling you, I've got 20 of them here. 20. Whew. So let's back up a second. I personally think, okay, so Baccarat Rouge was a big thing the past like two, three years, three years maybe. It was a really big thing. Just that whole trend of that burnt sugar note that saffron can turn into just kind of became a trend and every perfume house needed something with that saffron note in there, that sweet note. It was a trend that everybody associated with Baccarat Rouge because that was the one people smelled in malls. Well, I think Cherry Note is the new Baccarat Rouge. Cherry is trendy and popping up everywhere. Well, then came along Lost Cherry and kind of piqued this interest in Cherry, even though this one let us down a little. She did. Such high hopes. It really kind of just filled our hearts with that desire for cherry. And all these cherry fragrances started popping up. And I have 20, 20 cherry fragrances for you. So if you wanna know all about it, stay tuned for that. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about that for a second. So we'll jump right in. Lost Cherry, right? We all wanna say that's where it started. And it's quite possibly where it started. And Lush Cherry, man, so much promise, right? So much hope and promise in this bottle. We were all like, yes, yes, a cherry fragrance. Smelled it. Yeah, that is a beautiful, true Luxardo Maraschino cherry. And we just loved it for this deep, rich, syrupy black cherry that was just amazingness and it's like this excited new partner that gets we're just celebrating and high-fiving and hugging and dancing and then they throw you in the air and forget to catch you like that's lost cherry like wh where'd you go what happened we were having so much fun and you just vanished on me <laughs> you let me drop on my butt i think we all feel that way about this one opens amazing and then just yeah, abandons us. And for not very cheap either. So that's the Lost Cherry at number 20 here. From there actually came dupes. And the dupes were doing better. Oh, you know what? I guess I have 21. I forgot about this one. So I did pick up a dupe. I picked up a dupe but I picked up the Alexandria Lost Cherry, which is Fructus Virginis, as in virgin fruit. Ah, uh, lost your cherry. I finally just got it. Okay, I can be a little slow at times, okay? A little slow, blonde, sorry. Lost her cherry to that guy, Fructus Virgin, virgin fruit, okay. Yeah, okay. I feel so stupid for just getting that now. Oh my God. He is a little funny with his names. I think it's kind of cute what he does there. Honey. Okay, so this one is really good and it has that punch and it has that longevity. And I think he does a really good job with this. Um, and it's super affordable. He has new packaging now. It's not in these bottles anymore. Um, I always put a little label maker on there because I don't always know what these names are. I mean, you saw me. It took me like a year and a half to figure out the, the catchiness of the name, the double entendre there. But um, but this is really good. It's very, it's sweet. It's got that cherry and it has the longevity and the intensity, which is amazing. So he does a really good job with this one. I have one designer on here 
you know I don't have a lot of designers, but I do have this one. It is by Grelot, and it is La, P La Petite Robe Noire, the little black dress, and it is a series of flankers. Uh, this is the EDP. I, I only have the one, but I understand this whole series has the cherry note. And it's there. There's also a little bit of powderiness. Um, there's a lot of floral in here. I feel like it's more floral and powdery with some cherry in there. It's not, to me, especially compared to all these, a truly predominantly cherry fragrance or like a potent cherry fruit fragrance. But it's very pretty. And it is that Guerlain kind of fashion where it's a little more delicate. And the, the powdery undertone here is really very pretty too. Very delicate, um, feminine kind of feeling. Very like, um, definitely in a little dress. The next cherry fragrance that I picked up was my first House of Sillage Cupcake. I actually picked up this and Passion de l'Amour as my first ones. And I fell mad in love with Cherry Garden. Mad in love. This one has more of that cherry blossom in there. There's, oh, it's so pretty. The way there's cherry blossom, and then there's this almond that comes through. It definitely gives this big foggy kind of vibe around you, a very thick fog that I just really like foggy fragrances. I find them very intoxicating the way they just kind of encase you, right? I just like that. Um, Definitely has a sweetness to it. That same like slightly powdery kind of undertone that the Guerlain has, this has also. Really pretty. I absolutely love Cherry Garden. But again, not really a deep, rich, syrupy fruit so much as a cherry almond kind of feeling and a cherry blossom note where you have more of that floral kind of accent to it. But definitely a winner in my eye. Gosh, I can't stop smelling. This one is so doggone good. Okay. There's a lot. I, I can't like linger on these. The next cherry fragrance that I purchased. Yeah. Was this one. Italica by Zerjoff. This little baby here. Boy, does Zerjoff know how to make us crazy, right? They made it an exclusive that was so incredibly hard to find. And then I think they discontinued it for a little bit, then brought it back globally. Everybody pounced on it. I think it was originally in a red velvet bottle. I think I might be wrong. I didn't pay the exuberant prices for that unicorn, but I did get it when it came out later. Uh, gosh, this one. This one also drives me crazy a little bit. This one is an incredible gourmand and you, you get that deep, rich, syrupy cherry in there. You also get this hint of like waffle cone. This one starts out booming and satisfying and gourmand and incredible because it's literally like a waffle cone with mar true maraschino. Now, when I mention maraschino cherries here, I mean the real ones, the Luxardo syrupy, dark, cherries from Luxardo, not like the neon red maraschinos. Those things are like fake neon red, like chemistry experiments. I am not talking about those at all. Th those things are vile. Okay. No, does anybody like those? Those are vile, but the true real maraschino cherries, it does that. But here's the thing with me, it starts out that syrupy, rich cherry, with a little bit of almond. And then like at 45 minutes, there's just this, it turns on a dime. It just goes, whoosh, it just goes from this cherry syrup to whoosh, down here, more skin scent, more gourmand, where it's, it's more like biscotti kind of, or waffle cone, like very different and way lighter, but still delicious. It just turns into a little bit more like um, Lyra. A little bit more like lyric along those lines kind of but it is this incredible gourmand i mean this one drove everybody crazy when you couldn't get it and they were calling it the best gourmand in the world i mean it had that reputation and it's quite delicious it's italica the next one is going to surprise you a little bit oh it certainly surprised me now 
the Maison Dior Privé line has uh, Vive Delicios. I had heard all this amazing stuff about it and this cherry note in there and I'm like, gosh, I gotta get that. I gotta get that. Got myself a decant and was like, is this fake? I, I, I don't understand what's wrong with this. And I compared it to my friend's decant. I, I sent him some of my decant to compare to his full bottle and was like, is this legit? Because I get smoky and barely a skin scent. Like there's nothing there. This can't possibly be what people are raving about. Apparently now in hindsight, it's because it's been reformulated. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I heard. It's just what I heard. But, but, I got the dapper Vive Delicios and what Travis did over there was truly amp up that sour cherry note that's supposed to be in here. And I was, you know, first doubtful, but then Tammy told me, Tammy loves fragrances on Instagram. She's a friend of mine and she said, no, 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 you, you trust me, that is amazing what he did. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. I went and bought it. She's right. It's phenomenal. Now this is a gourmand. I mean, this, look at this, what I've used. I've also given a little bit of this out just to, I think I sent some to Gabby in the UK. Gabby loves perfumes. I sent some to her because I'm like, I'm telling you, it, I know this is only in the USA, but you gotta try this because it's just so different. It's so amazing. He took it and like made it better. Or it was like the way the original is. That's also a possibility because I never smelled the original, but it's truly a gourmand and you get like this chocolate and cherry in there. And it's so delicious, so, so delicious. And his last longer, I do get like maybe six hours or something. I don't get something phenomenal, which I normally get from him, but I do get, you know, unless I go anosmic, but I do get a really good amount of time from his and for the price, heck yeah, this is delicious. Next up, we have the brand new launch by Paulina Char with Navitus, and we have Venom of Love. Whew, Paulina. She knocked herself out with this one. She know, I know what she was going for and she nailed it. If you've ever had those chocolates called Moncherry, they have them in Germany, I know. Whenever I go to Germany, I have to bring back like a suitcase full of them. For my parents, my father's deceased, but for my parents, I would always have to as a kid, bring those home from Germany because they had a crazy obsession with those chocolates. It is a boozed cherry. It's a liqueur cherry on the inside and then in a dark chocolate shell. And then, you know, you bite into it and just all that liquid sugar booze just kind of goes all over and it's amazing. And that is what she nailed. You you spray this and you feel like you bit into one of those monchetti. Oh, amazingness, amazing, amazingness, very intense, um, definitely has, I say it has this, this Middle Eastern kind of flair to it. It has that intensity to it. It's definitely um, loud in intensity and projection and longevity and all of that. Now, as it dries down, you get that mid of the jasmine and rose that comes through and you do get I get this vibe of like Jasmine Wisp, if you're familiar with that fragrance, which is like this, um, a ja is it Utaka? I don't know. I'll, I'll mark down somewhere who makes that one, but it's a Middle Eastern fragrance. So it has that same Jasmine intensity, like with this slight bit of gourmand to it still, but the Jasmine comes forward a lot in the dry down. It's intense. Like this lasted until the next day for me when I showered it off and just got ready for the day. So it definitely has longevity, more longevity than you would need. Like, yes, it'll take you the distance until you shower again. Incredible. Very, really, really good. She nailed that one. Good job, Chipolina. So Venom of Love. I also have one you guys don't know about because it's a brand new release. I have from House of Siage, these new amplifiers. And there's a cherry one in here too. They, there's two collections. What's this called? The Wellness Collection and the Sensual Collection. Like angels and angels and little devilish little things here. Um, but in this sensual, I will do a video on this more completely. But in here is a cherry one. It is called... Oh, this is so... I feel like I'm going to have to rate R 
the video I do on this one. They're so spicy. It is called erogenous. My goodness. It's these drops. It's really sad that they have to put here um, to not put these on your face and do not put them internally. It's, it's really sad they have to say that, but they are these serum drops. It does look like face serum in fairness. It's in like a face serum kind of bottle. This is a wand, no a dropper. This is a dropper. Ooh, erogenous. So erogenous is, I'm wearing one contact right now, so it's killing me trying to read. It is take your body and mind stimulation to the next level and heighten your sensitivity with a touch of cherry extract, cherry extract, whipped cream extract, and vanilla on the nape of your neck for that, oh, so delicious, tantalizing feeling. It is sexy. This is just that, a beautiful cherry vanilla intense fragrance. Use a couple drops, but it's intense for about a minute. And then it's really just you or up close can smell it. And then it's gonna sound crazy. It dries down. It's really meant for layering. You can layer together. You can layer underneath another fragrance. They change and I'm telling you, it's like pheromones in a dropper. It's like crazy. It's like crazy. Beautiful cherry right now. And then it's it dries down. It smells kind of like sex. There's like a little bit of sex smell, but like the pheromone sex smell. It's insane. And it, it like puts this like almost invisible kind of elixir power underneath your fragrances and gives this kind of undertone to it. Whoo! Definitely not for children, okay? These are not for children to be playing with. Whoo! It's sexy time. And this is meant to be placed on your erogenous zones. Not for internal use and not for in your face. Yeah. I said spicy, did I not? I said that was spicy. But delicious. Yeah. The House of Siage um, new release. They're called Perfume Amplifiers. Yeah. Oh, cherry and whipped cream. Like, it, it just smells... It, it Cherry whipped cream on your erogenous zones. That's what this is. It's, um, yeah. 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 It's so good. Uh, but yeah, I will do a video on all of them. It's taken me a little while to get through them and play with them, figure them out, because at first I was like, whoo! can't wrap my head around this. This is not a perfume. This is not a base. This is, this is like, what is this? This is different. This is different. Whoa. This is like a magical elixir here. So took me a minute, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's like some witchcraft, like some good witchcraft going on over there. I got to tell you, but yeah, let's move on to the next one. Next up came out, I think last year. I could be wrong. Was it last year? Um, 2021 2021 this came out early 2021 rouge smoking by bdk this was another hit i mean look at this look at this red juice now that doesn't mind you of, of the the other neon kind of maraschino cherries is what this color reminds me of um this was again a done a little bit different it was unique and it's amazing this one has this candied vibe to it now on the first blast sometimes i get it sometimes i don't almost like um, a children's flavored cough syrup, like a cherry flavored cough syrup or like baby aspirin kind of thing. Not really chalky, but that same kind of cherry flavor. It's gone in five to 10 seconds, like literally immediately and the longer I own this, I really don't get that too much anymore. When I first bought this, I got it more. But there is a little bit of that baby aspirin powdery, sweet, cherry kind of aspect to this, but in such a good way. Like not medicinal really, more, it's kind of like Pez candies or something or baby aspirin. It's really quite good. Uh, I love Rouge Smoking. This is 
just done a different way and, and really has good longevity. I really like David over at BDK. He's done some incredible work with his perfumes and this is very popular for a reason. And it has longevity. Um, again, medium longevity on this one. I personally don't have bad longevity with this, but I find it modest at like the six to eight hour mark. It is not a beast. It is not cloying. It's none of that. It gets light, very light, but it starts out stronger. Rouge Smoky. Next up, I have from Bodicia the Bodicia. <laughs> Next up, I have from Bodicia the Victorious Bodacious, which is an exclusive at Selfridges. I think it's like in the three hundred dollar range. Huh. Okay, so Bodacious opens beautiful, almost like cookie, like almost like a cherry nut cookie kind of what I'm thinking. Soft baked, fresh out of the oven, like it, it leans into the almond part. And let me just say real quick, cherry and almond smell alike. That's why you'll see them often kind of use the same extracts to make those scents. They kind of run the spectrum of which way you can get it to lean. I don't know what like wizardry these perfumers use because they really are remarkable. I gave my mother a jar of Luxardo cherries to smell. She wanted to taste one. She's like, let me smell it first. And she goes, hmm, almonds. I'm like, no, there's no almonds. She's like, no, that smell. She was arguing with me. That's almonds. I'm like, mom, let me read the ingredients to you. Cherries, cherry juice, sugar, period. That's it. It's literally cherries and cherry juice in a syrup made from sugar. And I'm like, that's all there is. There's no almonds in here. They just smell identical. So you will con like frequently, like your brain can play by getting cherry, almond, cherry, almond, and then the surrounding notes can kind of influence what you interpret also. But I get a little bit of more of that almondy kind of influence on the Bodicea. Now, I also have the dapper version that I recently got just to kind of try it. Um, I like buying them because I didn't want to pay 300 for something that I do have a lot of cherry fragrances. And in that instance, I, I do because I'll get a hankering. I want to spray it. If it were an everyday scent or something, absolutely. Or if it's a special occasion, like absolutely, I would get the original. But you know, when it's just something I want to get hankerings for and spritz, I'm fine with the dapper. Now the opening is a little different. I mean, really good, but slightly different because you get more of a baked goods kind of opening, a little bit more on that almond on the original, whereas I get a vibrant, more vibrant cherry on the dapper. I have to tell you, I sometimes like the dappers more. This might be a circumstance of that. It's, it's more cherry, whereas it goes more almond baked goods on the Bodicea. Interesting, right? Very, very similar, very hard to tell apart, but there is that lean. But both really good options. The next one I haven't really seen until recently, which is really weird because I've had this one year and a half maybe. I just never spoke about it. And it's by Room 1015, it's called Cherry Punk. I got this in Scentbird. I, I discontinued my scent bird, but this is something I got and I was like, let me try it. And Cherry Punk is super affordable, like really affordable. I'm gonna say, I think under a hundred dollars. Like I've seen a lot of prices go up, so I hesitate to say. And Cherry Punk is a very vibrant cherry. Now this one is a little different. Again, even though you have this vibrant cherry note that's at the forefront, it's wrapped in leather or suede. Like it has this delicate, it's definitely a delicate, fine leather that it's wrapped in. And, and the leather has a little bit of that cherry scent to it. It's very good. It's like a cherry vanilla leather kind of fragrance. Definitely different, unique, um, again, a super steel. I don't think the longevity is the best on this if it has a shortcoming. It's adequate, just like some of the others. I'm going to say six hours again. Eh, it might be four to six hours. Like it's not the best longevity on this one, but it's really good. Cherry leather, a, a subtle amount. It's the leather's there, but it gives like this undertone to that cherry. 
really good. Next up, I have Aaron Terrence Hughes. Now this was one of the first fragrances of his that I tried. Uh, my friend Robbie had sent me a decant of this. He was just hell bent on having me discover Aaron Terrence Hughes. He's like, you've got to go down this rabbit hole with me. You've got to. I'm sending you decants. I'm telling you, you're going to fall in love with it. He was kind of right. I tried this and was like, oh my gosh, that is delicious. This is a gourmand. This is, um, this is super gourmand in the opening, much like Paulina's. Who else is super gourmand? Italica. We also went over very gourmand opening. You're getting that chocolate and cherry decadence, but there's something smoother about it. And he loves using these musks that, man, those musks he uses gives it this, this one has a heavy, thick fog around it. And you're in this rich gourmand of cherry, chocolate, praline kind of, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I actually like this. This is actually better than the Venom of Love. However, I think it's twice the price. It's not cheap. If he still has it, he keeps like putting out new ones and discontinuing other ones. The Forbidden is a phenomenal thick gourmand if that's what you like. You do have to like his musks, but this one is just, oh my gosh, delicious. Uh, I think there's oud in here too, actually. He likes to use that Thai oud, which is like a sweet, soft oud that I really enjoy because there's something a little more um, kind of like gourmandish about Thai oud that I enjoy. And it goes really well with gourmands, but it really helps pack a punch in this forbidden. But that's also what raises the price on this and makes it a heavier ticket. So there's that trade-off. So yeah, it's better, but it's going to cost you. Oh my goodness, this is good. Then Aaron went and came out with another release called Raw Cherry. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. He loves these cheeky little names too. I don't know if you noticed that or not. The Forbidden Fruit, Raw Cherry. Like he loves having these little like sexual innuendos, which I, I just find him so like cheeky and fun for that because he loves messing around. He's just playing. He's totally just playing. Like he'll say, oh, there's MMA and this one as a note. Like he's just messing with you. Don't take him too seriously. This one is a more fresh cherry. But again, it has that Aaron Terrence Hughes vibe to it. He's always going to have that certain musks that he uses. Like he certainly has a strong DNA to his brand. There's, um, and it's not for everyone. I find it addictive. There's something addictive about it. You either love it or hate it. So you kind of want to sample if you can. I like Forbidden better than Raw Cherry, but Raw Cherry is really good. It doesn't have that chocolate and the other stuff in it. It's more fruity with a strong point on the cherry. I like hard candy better. This is like in between the forbidden, which is chocolate cherry and hard candy, which is like strawberry starburst. Goes a little bit more into that like hard candies kind of vibe. And this is in the middle. It's like neither a fresh fruit nor a cherry candy. And it's not entirely this fogginess, but there is a little bit of musk to it. It's a more gentle musk. It's not a, a fog storm around you like forbidden. So it's kind of in the middle ground there. Um, but because of that, like it's neither this nor that either. It's kind of like, what's your place? I don't know where to put you, you know, like how do I identify you? Cause you're not really identifying with anything. So it's unique for that. And you do get this, this overtone of this fresh cherry, but raw cherry. The next one, I also only have a decant of, who, this is a long name very descript name and it's by Melig. Um, I don't know where he is. He might be in the UK. I'm not sure, but it is very, let's read it here. Very cherry rose chocolate patchouli. He's a new brand. He's whew, pretty expensive. Here he has very ornate kind of packaging. I do have a decant here. 
It's very beautiful. You can actually pull out the notes that are in the title. Like the title is literally what you're smelling. You get a lot of cherry. I do get rose with that cherry that almost gives it like a really strong cherry blossom kind of smell because it's potent rose, potent cherry. And then also that chocolate and a base of patchouli that carries it through. Very gourmand, but there's something about the rose that elevates it a little out of that deep, rich, I want to eat my hand kind of zone to make it a little bit more like I'm wearing a fragrance, I didn't spill food on me, right? Like kind of feel to it. Very pretty, very strong cocoa kind of smell. Um, very nice, the Melig fragrance. Melig also has cherry rose, which I just recently got a decant of. Cherry rose is almost like he took that fragrance and pulled the cherry and the rose out got rid of the patchouli base and the chocolate, but I still get this hint of cocoa in here. It could be there's just so much in the air right now. I mean, I'm open to that possibility. I am open to it. I've sprayed quite a bit in here. I usually pre-spray these and then open the windows to get all that air out. And then I can get the dry down. But on these, I really wanted the opening because the openings are so intense on these. Um, and then they tend to really dry down that I just, I really wanted for most of these, that opening. This is rose. That's almost like cherry blossom is what this one is. It's more delicate, this fragrance. I did try spraying it. It's definitely a delicate floral kind of fragrance with this light cherry aspect to it, like a cherry floral, but not a heavy cherry. This next one is just totally like stealing the headlines everywhere. It is the newest fan favorite. Everyone's going crazy for it. It's known as the best cherry right now. Um, definitely the new kid on the block. And it is by, it is by Gritty and it is Duquesa. Whew, beautiful, beautiful bottle too. Beautiful Italian brand that has come out with this phenomenal cherry. Um, and I have a discount code for you. They do carry this at Lucky Scent. Ooh. So certain brands, also like Simone Andrioli is over there at Lucky Scent now. Thank goodness, because I know like a year and a half ago when I started covering Simone Andrioli, nobody was distributing it in the United States. Nobody, maybe we can get somebody to pick up bon, bon Talenti too. That would be pretty cool. But they are over at Lucky Scent now. Lucky Scent also has the Duquesa. And I have the code Greta10, which is good for the month of October. So go grab this for 10% off because I don't think you're going to find 10% off anywhere right now. I, I, I'm always looking to help you guys and get some discount codes because I like discount codes. I like discount codes. So you can, you can get anything you want at Lucky Scent. It applies to everything. This one is phenomenal. There's also this like touch of sugariness to it. I sprayed this this morning. Um, it does turn kind of skin scent on me pretty early on, like very quickly, like in the first hour or two. But it also has this like, like, like somebody powdered me with sugar kind of feel to it, which I really enjoy. And the, the cherry lingers on. This lasts better on clothing, but you know, a lot of cherries, that cherry note doesn't seem to be a very heavy molecule that lasts. This is so pretty. There, there's also a little bit of saffron in here, which helps kind of punch up that cherry a little bit too. The saffron, the sugar, the cherry. This one is delicious. Duquesa is more floral compared to Bodacious. They both have this elegant feel to it, but Bodacious is more gourmand, whereas the Duquesa has this floral aspect to it in comparison, but they're both very, very elegant. Absolutely delicious. I know everyone's been trying to get this from Italy and now Lucky Scent has it, which is kind of cool. Highly recommend the Gritti uh, Duquesa by Gritti. Yum. The next one is by the Old Fragrance Group, also known as HFC, kind of abbreviated a lot. They have very pretty bottles, I'll put a picture. And it's also making, making waves and it is Wrap Me in Dreams. I also have a decant here. I think this is from Kat. Thank you, Kat. 
Um, I, you know, I found this in Canada. I don't know who's distributing it here. I just saw it recently. Cannot remember where I saw that. I wish Lucky Scent would pick this up. Maybe they will. But Wrap Me in Dreams is also making waves. This one has a little bit of boozy rum to it, along with, again, that cherry powdered sugar kind of feel to it that makes it so sexy. Oh my goodness. This one's amazing. This one is really amazing. You got to find this one. I got to, I'll try to find it and then link it down below. I'll link them down below everyone, like with where you can find them if I can and any discount codes that I have for you. This one is so delicious. Yeah, totally like a powdery, sugared, powdered sugar, cherry, almond, rum cherry kind of fruit. Actually, it's not a rum cherry. It's not a boozy cherry. It's more like there's rum as a separate note because there's a difference. It's just kind of in there making it this boozy, sweet, sexy, cozy, cocooning kind of fragrance that is so delicious. Amazing. What do I have left? I have this one is, okay. I didn't know about this one until recently. It's, there's another one from Bodissi the, from Bodissi the Victorious called Michelin Star. Super expensive, like super expensive that I wasn't going to just blind buy this. So I went and I only knew about it from Dapper when I saw Dapper dropped it. Sometimes he keeps me in the know of like, what's the newest trendy thing? And I was like, all right, let me just try it. I'm like in these notes, sounds really good. And I was like, holy cow, holy cherry. Now, if you got the dough and want to drop like 1200 bucks, awesome. I really wasn't feeling that. So I got the dapper and this is delicious. Let me tell you, this is like um, very prominent cherry with a touch, like a pinch of cinnamon in there, giving it this like spicy, sweet, just a hint. It's, it's like a woody cherry vanilla sprinkle of cinnamon, giving it this beautiful fall winter vibe to it. But it's not like a heavy, rich kind of like beast kind of fragrance. There's still something really elegant about this. Much like, um, much like the Duquesa, the Gritty Duquesa has a very elegant, expensive feel to it. So does this. It has this elegant, smooth feel. The Michelin star is also very elegant, but instead of being like a cherry with chocolate or a cherry with florals, it's this cherry with woods and then this pinch of cinnamon, but done very elegant and smooth, creamy, musky vanilla kind of vibe to it. So good. But again, I wasn't dropping $1,200 on it, so I got the dapper, which that's the only one I've tried. I have not tried the OG, but I gotta tell you this one is good too. Um, there's one more that I don't have here is by Kayali, the Burning Cherry Love Fest. Whew. Okay. That one again opens this cherry note, kind of like, um, kind of like the weight loss cherry opens up very quickly though. Within 15 minutes, you get a little bit of this like campfire kind of smoky scent to it. And then it goes down to the skin scent really fast. I gotta tell you really fast, like 30 minutes, like really fast. It's beautiful. But since I got like a 30 minute longevity, I actually returned mine to Sephora, which is where I got it. I was a little disappointed, but it does smell amazing and maybe layering it would, would increase the, that longevity. But for me, for that price, I wanted more than 30 minutes. And especially having all these other cherries, it just wasn't, worth it to me. I apologize. Um, Mona, I'm so sorry. I, I love you. I love you. You do great work. I just, sorry. Sorry. Ugh. I also have from Boho Boco wet cherry liqueur coming. That will be here tomorrow. So I will add on a little snippet for that. It, I have, I purchased some stuff from Lucky Scent and they were so awesome. I'm getting it like next day because UPS in within California, UPS ground is next day. So I will film that and, and add, edit it in. I may or may not be wearing the same clothes. 
sometimes I, all right, a little secret between, just, just between us, like just our little secret. There's times I actually put the same clothes on and refilm something to put into the video and you guys never notice. You can tell by my makeup if you look closely. The makeup gives me away because it'll be a little different, but that's like a girl thing. We notice eyeshadows and stuff like that, but you know. Bye. Okay, I have one more that I just received in shipping, so I'm gonna add this on. So I received this from Lucky Scent. I had placed an order. They're so amazing, it got here next day, uh, by Boho Boko Wet Cherry Liquor. Now, I did get a chance to wear this, before filming this and then I wore it today. Man, this one opens a lot like Lost Cherry. It's that syrupy cherry with a little bit of booziness to it. Um, I will say today I went, I don't know what I do. Six to eight sprays. I was really surprised that they didn't smell it when I had to go run to work for some stuff. I was really shocked. Um, also shocked, this is a velvet cap. I did not notice that from any other reviews that this is a velvet top, which was really cool looking. Kind of like that. Um, great like strawberry cherry kind of color too. There's strawberry in here, caramel. I'm not really getting the caramel, but I get that strawberry cherry kind of thing. Um, I'll tell you the first time I wore this though, when I first got this, I was amazed that for hours I kept smelling it. I was really amazed by the longevity. I think I just sprayed in a real hurry today, like as I was out running out the door and it was this fine mist that I, I don't think I got myself in because yesterday for hours, I was like, this just might be my favorite yet because wow, for hours and hours I kept smelling this intense cherry the way lost cherry opens up so so good the other notes in here um let's see cherry liquor note cherry syrup strawberry caramel turkish rose sandalwood vetiver tonka bean and vanilla but i really get that syrupy cherry with a little bit of a strawberry kind of tone to that cherry giving it that real fruity kind of feel to it opens with the liquor, but that liquor part goes away and you get really this syrupy maraschino cherry, real maraschino cherry, not the neon kind. Um, great one, the Boho Boho, Boho Boko. I always screw this name up, Boho Boko. And then that's my, um, yeah, 21, I guess, not even 20, 21 cherry fragrances, like the ultimate cherry fragrances. If you can think of one, that I didn't mention, comment down below because, or just tell me your favorite, because I gotta tell you, this is a very comprehensive list of all the best cherries out there currently. Like I said, I truly believe this is the new trend and there's gonna be cherry popping up everywhere. So that's mine. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more ultimate lists. See you in the next one. Mwah.